Coming up on First at Four, a local high school student is awarded a medal of heroism. What he did and why he says he was just doing his job. Plus, the Biden administration is rolling out heavy taxes on many products entering the U.S. from China. President Biden's strategy as critics slam the timing. And a soggy weather pattern continues for much of this week. The latest on those rain chances coming up as Mountain News First at Four starts now. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News First at Four. Good afternoon, I'm Steve Hensley. First at four this morning, a longtime member of our Mountain family, WYMT's chief forecaster Brandon Robinson announced his retirement. Today, May 14th, marks Brandon's 17th anniversary with the station. While he served in many areas while working here, he spent most of it on air, ensuring safety during extreme weather events. And he's become more like family to many of our viewers. And since his first diagnosis, he's been very transparent about his battle with brain cancer and recent expressive aphasia diagnosis. That's why I made the decision to retire, uh, not because I wanted to, because I have to. Uh, plus, I'll get to spend more time with a, my beautiful wife, Stephanie. Well, today is certainly sad for us here at the station. We are also choosing to be happy for Brandon's next chapter. You'll be hearing much more from Brandon coming up in our 6 p.m. newscast. One high school student received a special honor for his involvement in saving someone's life. WYMT's Jack Dimler has that story from Corbin. Ten months ago, Jason Post jumped into action to save the life of someone in need. And on Tuesday, Post was recognized for his act of heroism. While at Camp Davy Crockett, Post saved the life of someone who was experiencing a heat stroke. Post was awarded with the Medal of Heroism, but says the act of heroism was never about the recognition. It's, it's surreal. Um, honestly, I mean, I, I was doing my job, so I don't, like, I'm appreciative of it, but it was my job. It's what I got paid for. It was what I was supposed to do, so, I mean. Senior Army instructor at Corbin High School for the JROTC program, Colonel Mike Farley, says in his 12 years of being at Corbin High School, this is the first time they have had the chance to honor somebody at this level. In Corbin, Jack Demler, WIMT Mountain News. Farley says on average about three people a year nationwide receive this award. We are tracking some more wet and gloomy weather on this Tuesday. Let's go to first alert pinpoint Doppler. Some good news today. No severe weather, but a few heavier pockets of rain are possible as we go into this afternoon. Also this evening, zooming into the Cumberland Valley, some heavier showers not too far away from Barberville over in Knox County, also in Bell County, close to downtown Middlesbrough at this hour, and a few more light sprinkles in McCreary County, pushing into Whitley, also Laurel counties at this hour. Some more light to moderate showers over far southeastern Breathitt County over northern Knott County, also southern McGoffin County, and some more lighter showers and a few sprinkles close to West Liberty and Morgan County, moving through parts of the Big Sandy Valley from Johnson County into Lawrence County at this hour. A live look across the mountains, tracking plenty of cloud cover, also some wet weather in some areas. Notice the raindrops on the camera over at I-64 in Moorhead. Most of us well below average in the upper 60s to lower 70s, thanks to those clouds, also those showers, and more rain chances are on the way as we go into tonight night also for most of this week. So once again, the umbrella is your friend this evening. If you have those plans, we could see some more off and on showers. Those temperatures in the middle to lower 60s. Most of us wake up in the upper 50s to lower 60s and you guessed it. More showers on the way for tomorrow as well. Those details coming up in just a few minutes. Steve. All right, Cameron, thank you. Former President Jimmy Carter's grandson says the nation's 39th president is quote doing OK, but nearing the end. Jason Carter made the announcement today during the 28th annual Rosalind Carter Georgia Mental Health Forum. The former president entered hospice care more than a year ago. He celebrated his 99th birthday last October and made his last public appearance in November at his wife Rosalind's funeral. 
Michael Cohen is back on the stand at former President Donald Trump's criminal trial. Trump's former personal lawyer and fixer faces cross-examination from defense lawyers who are attacking his credibility. Cohen has admitted to lying under oath and has served jail time on charges related to hush money payments. House Speaker Mike Johnson is among the high-profile GOP lawmakers attending the trial today. The president's actions in this matter were previously reviewed and no charges were filed. Why is that? Because there's no crime here. With Trump or under a gag order, leading Republicans have been making appearances showing their loyalty to the presumptive GOP presidential nominee. President Biden is raising tariffs on some Chinese-made goods which will make them more expensive for Americans to buy. But in this presidential election year, political rewards and costs are also in play. CBS's Skylar Henry explains. President Biden, surrounded by union workers, signed strong new tariffs targeting Chinese-made goods and green technologies because he says China is creating an uneven playing field. To make sure American workers and American business and corporations can compete and win in the industries of the future. The move pushes the U.S. tax on Chinese steel up to 25 percent. Chinese-made semiconductors will be hit with a 50 percent tariff. Electric vehicle batteries will rise to 25 percent, and Chinese EVs will have a 100 percent tariff placed on them. We're never going to allow China to unfairly control the market for these cars, period. The new tariffs on China are a position change for President Biden, who had previously slammed former President Trump for taking the same action. Every single step this president has taken in dealing with China has exacerbated the challenge has made it worse. Speaking outside the courtroom where he's on trial, Trump claimed Biden is late to the party. He wants to put a uh, big tariff on China, which is a suggestion that I said, where have you been for three and a half years? They should have done it a long time ago. President Biden was asked about Trump's comments following the ceremony. Trump said today, China is eating our lunch. What do you say in response? He's been feeding them a long time. <laughs> it's no coincidence that among the states most impacted by China's trade practices are the presidential election battlegrounds of Michigan and Pennsylvania. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. China said it opposes the new tariffs, which they claim violate trade laws. Beijing is promising to take action to protect its businesses. Coming up on First at Four, a Baltimore bridge goes out with a bang. What's next for the Francis Scott Key Bridge and the port that's a massive economic driver for the nation? Plus, we are not done with the wet weather. Your first alert forecast after this break. 